All right, everybody, we're going to do a quick video just trying to talk about these two types of diagrams that we can use when we have statistic, or not statistics, probability um, that we need to think about. So a lot of times when you're thinking about the possible ways that a situation could go down, um, you can make a diagram to kind of represent that. So there are two versions or two types of diagrams that we're going to learn about in this part of the unit. Um, they are Venn diagrams and sample space diagrams. So let's jump right in. A Venn diagram, you probably made them before in like English class or history, and they generally look like one of these, where it's like, oh, one thing is in this circle, and then one thing is this circle, and there's this little spot right here in the middle that uh, overlaps that, you know, that's true about when, when something has both qualities or is both things, then you can put it right there in that center little portion. So when we come to a statistical or a probability problem like this, excuse me, um, usually they're just going to kind of give you a situation and it's going to, it makes sense to kind of just put it down and then draw like circles of like, okay, these, these are, these elements are included in this group and these elements are included in that group. And these elements are included included in both. And so this is just kind of a super basic one. It says three students take geography, four students take Spanish, and six students take both. What is the probability that uh, the student I select S takes A, only geography, B, only Spanish, C, both? So uh, we can use these letters. And so if we think about it, if we just make like a diagram right here, this could be S for Spanish. And then we're going to have another circle that's going to overlap over here that is just geography. And then this little spot in here, and we're just going to put a B on there because that's both. And so sometimes they'll give you this with like names of people like, oh, so-and-so and this guy and this girl, they take these classes. Um, and you're kind of, it's going to be a lot harder to kind of map out. This one, it's pretty easy because I just told you what number goes with each. So you don't really need one of these diagrams, but just to take the idea. So if I just had three names, so Johnny, Cindy, and Sally. So Jay, Cindy, Sally. I could put those there. Okay, I'm, I'm mapping this out. Okay, they only take Spanish. And then these four students, Bob and Carl and Fred and... Timmy, they take geography. So I'm mapping this out, which is kind of hard because I'm using letters and there's other letters. So we're going to keep this. Let me highlight this letter so I don't mix it up. That's my B for both. And then we have six students. I'm not going to make up six students' names. I'm just going to write six in here um, that would go in there. And so we would kind of see, like, okay, this is how the the, uh, the thing breaks down. And so if we wanted to do our, our probability, we have the probability of the student meeting event A, only geography, is 4 out of, we have 6 and 3 and 4, so 13. Then we can put that in our calculator and get an answer. And then we have the probability of event B happening is just Spanish, and that's 3, and there's still 13 total students that I could pick from. And then finally, our probability of event C happening is for both, and that's 6 out of 13. And so that this kind of just matches with what we would automatically already think is that, yeah, like it's going to make more sense that I would probably pick a student that was in both because that has the, the highest number. Um, and so, again, this is just a way to kind of map out or keep track of the information that you're getting. So on that same kind of idea, we can talk about these sample space diagrams. So a sample space diagram is when we kind of make a table, basically, that outlines our options or things that could happen. And this is a lot, this is really handy when there's numbers involved because you're keeping track of like, oh, they roll two dice and they're adding the numbers together or they're subtracting them or they're multiplying them or they're doing some sort of operation with the numbers they get and getting an answer, and then, then the answer needs to meet a certain qualification. So let's read this example. So I, so I designed two tetrahedral dice. So tetrahedral dice, that just means four-sided, tetra, like Tetris. Think about Tetris, it just has four blocks, all the different versions. So two four-sided dice, 
the first with four even numbers, the second with four, the first four perfect squares. If I throw them and write down the sum of the two numbers, d, find the probability that d is a prime number divisible by two, a multiple of three. And so when we make these diagrams, we have to, first we take the first dice. So we would probably make like a, a table. I used Excel when I made the example for class. And then we're just going to put our different answers. So the first four even numbers are two, four, six, and eight. That's one dice. This is dice one. These are called um, some weird, uh, I can't even, even say that it's, uh, the type of dice it is, but when you make a dice that's a certain amount of sides, but you change the numbers all around, it's kind of just a probability thing. Anyway, uh, so the second dice is the first four perfect squares. So the first four perfect squares are one, four, nine, and 16, which messes with my uh, example that I did here on, on the side. So we're just going to do this together. So I'm taking the sum and so now that I have it lined up, I kind of just use this to take the sum. So 1 and 2 make 3, 1 and 4 make 5, uh, 1 and 6 and se is 7, 1 and 8 is 9, and I just keep doing that. So 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, this is 11, this one's going to be 18, this is going to be 13 and 15 and 17. And then this is 20, this is 22, and this is 24. So we have these numbers. So our total, so when we're trying to find our, uh, what do you call it, our different events. So if I have the, the, the event is me throwing the dice is D, and the answer, if the event A being a prime number. So I'm going to go ahead and use a highlighter. So the prime number we'll just say is yellow. So these are the prime numbers, 3, 5, 7, and 11, 13, and that's pretty much it. If I'm right, let me double check my work. I got 11, I got 13, I got 5, 7, 3. Oh yeah, 17 is prime too. So can't forget 17. So if I wrote this out for my probability, it would be... 6 out of 4 times 4 is 16. So that's how many total possible answers there are. And 6 of those are prime numbers. So let's change it to a different color. Let's use this pink color. So then divisible by 2. So the numbers that are divisible by 2. This is divisible by 2, divisible by 2, divisible by 2, by 2, by 2, by 2, by 2, by 2. By two. And I think we're, that's it. So then we can write our probability of event B happening. And that is 8 out of 16. So that one's an easy one to know. It's half. Um, and so then we can do our last one. So let's get green. It's a multiple of 3, meaning that when I, 3 times 1 is 3, so 3, 6, 9, that good stuff. So let's keep it on the highlighter. And so this is a multiple of 3. I'm just going to put a little green next to it. Multiple of 3, multiple of 3, multiple of 3, multiple of 3. This one's a multiple of 3, multiple of 3 here too. I think that is... Hit. Let me double check. We got 3, 6, 9, 12, 18, 24, 15. Let's do this one all the way green. So cool. Let's write our so D with event C. So when it's prime, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 out of 16. So this is just these are just ways to kind of put down our thinking so that we can see it and count it and get our theoretical probability like we talked about in the first day. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful and uh, I'll see you in class.